In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of using functions in C. So functions are something you might be more familiar with than you realize. Because this main here, this is a function definition for a special function called the main function, where execution is going to start when your C program is executed. And printf, for example, printf is a function. And you can call this function. So when we say printf, and we give a string argument here, we're calling the printf function and we're asking it to print the string hello world to the screen. And we can compile this and we'll get hello world printed out. And printf is a function that's defined in this library here. Now, why do we have functions in C? Why do we use them? Why are we learning about them? So functions are common across programming languages for a couple of reasons. One is it allows us to group together a set of functionality that we can then call and use again and again in our program. So we can have many printf statements in our program. And, and this is okay, right? We can just call printf many times in our program. And this same code that is responsible for outputting text to our terminal here is going to you know, run however many times we want it to by just calling the function again and again. So if we have some block of code that we want to repeatedly run in different areas throughout our program, that's one good reason to use functions. Another really good use, reason to use functions is they allow us to split up a large problem into a set of smaller problems. And that sort of divide and conquer approach, that's a big thing in computing. Because if you think about a very large program, let's say it's you know tens of thousands of lines of code. If you wrote an entire main function that was tens of thousands of lines of code, that's gonna be difficult to understand and read because it's not really broken down into a set of more kind of comprehensible, smaller sub problems. So functions allow us to break our program down into a nice kind of logical set of sub problems that might be utilizing each other. We might have functions calling other functions. We might have uh, functions that utilize several of, of other functions and that's okay. So that's another reason why we like functions is that they allow us to break our program down in a modular way that's going to be more sensical, that's gonna be more readable, more understandable for others. So let's actually make a function here. I'm gonna say here int add, and I'm gonna say int a, int b. Then I'm gonna say int result is equal to a plus b. Then I'm gonna say here return result. So even though this is a small example, it actually contains all the key pieces of a function. So this here is what's called the function header. And this here is what's called the function body. And together, these make the function definition. Now, what's going on here is that we're giving a name to the function. The name of the function is add. And that's what we would use if we want to call the function. We would use add to call it. So we would say like add, and we would then have to give something here. So add is the name of the function. This here, this int here, that's the return value. And this is basically telling the C compiler that this function is going to return an int value. Now this here, int a and comma int b, these are the parameters of the function. So we're telling C that when this function is called, we expect to provide it with two integer values. We expect there to be two integer values provided. And then inside the function body here, this is where we're gonna execute the code. This is where we're gonna actually perform some work. And so then we say int result, we can make a variable here, and we say result is equal to a plus b. We add the two numbers together that are gonna be provided to this function, and we store the value in result, and then we return the result. So the return result, this is the return statement. Now functions don't always have to have a return, but they often do. And what the return statement does is it actually returns a value of this type. So it actually is going to return a value of this type here. And that's how the function is going to actually finish is, is that it's going to you know, return the result and then the function's done. So here, if I were to say like add and I were to say four, five, or we'll say, yeah, four, five here. And then I'll say maybe here, I'll say int, and I'll say maybe output is equal to add four five. And then I'm gonna say printf and I'll say output percent D and we'll, out, we'll just print out the output. So what's going on here is that we're calling the add function. 
And when we call the add function, we're providing with two arguments, four and five. And what's going to happen is, is that A is going to be set to four. B is going to be set to five. Then the body of the function is going to run. And we're going to create a variable result that is going to, you know, add four and five together. And then result is going to be nine. Then we return nine. When we return nine, it's kind of like if we replaced add with the return value. So it's like if we did this, it's like if nine just appeared here and we just returned nine at this point. Like, so nine is gonna be the, the value that output is set to. So add is going to return a value. And when it does, it's almost as if like you replaced this call to add with the value. It's almost like that. So when we say here, add four, five, we're gonna get nine back and we're gonna set output equal to that value. And then we're gonna print out the output. So we'll just run this here. And you know what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna comment out these because I don't think I really need these anymore here. Um, and then I'm gonna say here, GCC to compile it and we'll run it again and I get output nine. So that is a, a basic function there. And now a couple things about this. One is we actually have the function defined above main. And we did that for a particular reason. So if I were to take this, so I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna paste it below the main. If I were to take this and paste it below the main and then try to compile my program, we're gonna find it's not gonna like this. We're gonna find that the compiler is not gonna like this. The compiler is gonna complain about this. So we'll give this a shot here. We'll say gcc dash out demo demo.c. And the compiler here says error implicit declaration of function add is invalid in C99. And basically what it's telling us is, I don't know what this is. Implicit declaration means like, where is this coming from basically? And so it's, it's telling us like, I don't know what this is. So the problem is, is that the, the way that C programs are compiled, when you call a function, the compiler has to be aware of the function at that point. It needs to be at least aware that it exists. It can be defined later, but it needs to be at least aware that it exists. So oftentimes what you'll see in a C program is that the main function will be at the top of the file and the functions that main might use are defined below it. But what you'll see is this. We'll copy and paste this function header here and we're gonna put it up here and put a semicolon there. What this now becomes is what's called a function declaration. So we're not defining the function here, but we're telling C, we're telling the C compiler, really, I should say, that we want to have a function called add. It's going to return an integer and it's going to accept two integers as arguments. And we're telling that to the C compiler by putting it here. So that way when the main function gets compiled and the, and the compiler sees add here, it says, okay, I don't know what the definition of this function is yet, but I do know that it's been declared. I know that it's going to exist. So sure, you can go ahead and use it. And then down here, um, now we've actually provided the function definition. So we call this the definition, we call this the declaration. And then what you can do is you can, you know, we'll, we'll just clear this here. Now if we compile it here, it'll actually work and we get back to an output of nine. So one of the reasons why we might wanna do this is that if we had a bunch of function definitions up here, then the main function, which is pretty important because it's the starting point of the execution of our program, would be buried below a bunch of function definitions. We can also have multiple function definitions and we can, we can have functions that call other functions we've defined. So let's make another function. We'll call this one int, we'll call it mult. And mult is gonna take in two parameters. We're gonna say int x and int y. And mult is actually going to be another function, but it's gonna use our add function. And we're gonna actually implement a very inefficient multiplication function. So we're gonna make a multiplication function here, and it's gonna take in two values, x and y, to multiply. And we're gonna assume that they're both positive integers. And what we're gonna to do to perform the multiplication is that we're going to add y to zero x times. So we're gonna say here int result is equal to zero. And I'm gonna say here for int i is equal to zero, i is less than, and I'll say x, and I'll say i plus plus here. And we'll add to this result y. And we're gonna add y to the result x times. And then we'll return the result. So this is gonna be a super inefficient 
multiplication function because it's doing a bunch of additions to perform multiplication. So we'll give this a shot here. We'll say printf and we'll say mult output percent D and I'll say here mult output. And now I'm going to say here int mult output is equal to, we'll say multiply 10 and 10 because that should be 100. And we'll give this a try. So now we've defined another function here. And I can run this here and I get multiplication output of 100. That seems correct. Let's try something a little trickier. We'll try like 9 and, oh, sorry, 9 and 7. And we'll just give this a shot just to give our function another test here. We got 63. So our multiplication is working and we've defined another function here. Now what we could also do is we could have this multiplication function use our add function. So functions we've defined can call other functions we've defined. So I could say instead of, you know, result plus equals y, I could say result is equal to result, or sorry, add result, and then I'll say y. So basically I'm saying set result equal to the addition of whatever result is currently and y. And so if I run this here, I still get 63. So I recompiled it and ran it and I still got 63. And it's because I'm just changing it to use our add function now. And I've got a function here that's using another function. So now one other thing about functions that we really want to make sure we understand is what's the relationship between these values here and these variables here? Because what's going on here, if you look at it, is I'm giving specific values here. Like here I'm giving four and five and we call add and int a is gonna be set to four, int b is gonna be set to five. In this function here, mult, I give it the values nine and seven, multiplication is gonna be called, and when it's called, x is gonna be set to nine and y is gonna be set to seven. So there's a difference between arguments and parameters. So parameters are these. Parameters are the variables, and these variables are gonna be local to this function. So int x and int y, they don't actually exist outside of this function. We call them local variables because they're local to this function here. And when we pass in an argument like this, this is a particular value. These are specific values. And when the function is called, what's gonna happen is it's like we've created a variable x and set it equal to seven. And we've created a variable y and set it equal to nine. So that's, that's one big thing to understand is that when you call a function, you're basically setting these, you're initializing these parameters to a particular value. So for example, in this mult function here, when we call add and we say result and y, we're not really giving it like the variable result and the variable y. What we're giving add is we're, we're calling add with whatever value result is currently, which is initially gonna be zero, and we're gonna call it with whatever value y is currently. So like add is just gonna get some number for A and some number for B, and it's gonna do some work with them and then return another number, which is gonna be you know, the result of this function call here. And, and that's it. And so we don't really, like there isn't really a relationship between result and A and Y and B beyond that. And so that's just something to, to make sure you understand is that the, the functions are being called with a value as the, as the arguments and the, the parameters here, these variables are set to those values. And that's the only relationship there. It's not like result is somehow like the same result as in this function here or being used by this function here beyond its value being used when the, the, the function is called uh, as an argument. So that's one thing about functions. Now, another thing about functions is variables like this, like int result, these are also local to the function. So this variable here, result, it only exists when this function is called and then that's it, it's done. It, it no longer exists and it's, it's just, it's local to the function. So we can't use result outside of this function. It's not like we could use result in our main function. That's another important thing about functions. Now, one other thing about functions is that functions can have no return value. You can have what's called a void function and a void function has no return value. So you, you do it like this, you'd say void and we could say maybe like print int and then we'll say here int a and all this is gonna do is print out an integer and we'll provide a function definition now. So I'll say, void print int. Now with this type of a function, there's no return value. So we're just gonna say here like printf 
we're going to say like int percent %d, and we're going to print out a. And now I could call this function to print out an integer. And notice how there's no return statement here. So in this case, execution of the function is going to stop when we meet the end of this block. So when we, when we basically when we reach this closed squiggly bracket, that's when we're done. So we could call this function as well. I could call it print int, and I could say print int, you know, five, and this will then print out the integer five. And the function just has no return value. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.